Happy National Cookie Day! In two days, we have National Cookie Day. Here, crunchy cookies, 100% carnivore. Carnivore Girls Creative Carnivore Kitchen. No plants. No dairy. The next level cooking show. Carnivore recipes with meat, fish, seafood, eggs, gelatin, flavored seltzer, water and salt. From super easy to complicated. From quickly done to many hours in the kitchen. I always say everybody's body and brain are different and you gotta figure out what works best for you. The carnivore lifestyle has tremendous benefits, healing effects and is the best elimination diet. There are many different ways how to do carnivore. I found a way that momentarily works the best for me. In this cooking show, I'll show you it doesn't have to be boring and can be very creative, delicious and fun. I already created so many carnivore recipes on Instagram at Carnivore Girl. And I have this never-ending list on my phone with tons of ideas. My brain is a gift and a curse. Have fun with this episode! Welcome to my creative carnivore kitchen. In two days, we have National Cookie Day. So of course I want to make some cookies, crunchy cookies, and um, it's December, so why not Christmas cookies? These are my Christmas cookies for this year. For me, this is super exciting. Finally, I get to do cookies again. And yes, 100% carnivore, of course. Yay! Sterilizing. So my jars are actually all clean. I wash them by hand, then in the dishwasher, and then I just store them until I need them. And so before charring, I started sterilizing everything. So all the jars, all the rings, all the, all the lids are in here in a pot with three quarts of water because that's the amount then I will need for charring. I'm gonna put on the lid close it and it's already set on the highest now i'm gonna wait until it starts boiling and when it boils i set the timer to 10 minutes and the steam in here will nicely sterilize everything and now everything is nicely sterilized it's still very hot of course so usually i just keep it in here for a while then i take it out and I can start charring. 30 eggs are in here blended with salt. Here, um, ground venison, ground wild boar, ground um, beef, fatty, ground lamb. Here, um, wild coho salmon. I uh, diced up very uh, thinly and canned albacore tuna. So use whatever meat, whatever fish, seafood you want. Best is um, if it's already ground up or cut it very, 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 very um, small. Okay, I think I found out a good um, recipe, meaning the numbers. So, 170 grams of meat or fish or whatever and 200 grams of egg that's what i mixed here i already did um some i did the ground beef i did the ground lamb and i did the ground wild boar so i'm gonna do the ground venison now oh my gosh i hope i have enough Oh, yeah, yeah, that's more than enough. Good. So I need 170, 170 grams of the meat. Now egg. And of course, I already added more eggs here, 10 more eggs. So 
40 large eggs for eight jars. I did the math and I think that should work. Maybe I have to add one more or half more, whatever. And uh, I put salt in here. So 200 grams. Now blending everything together. And yeah, you see in the corners, I have these stuck here. So I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get these off. And blend them. Now, jars. This is very important for this one here. So usually I jar with wide mouth pint jars. These are the ones I really like. And yes, really that one, the ball, because I have here measurements. So when I do checks, a uh, recipe here, um, I really need those markers, those measurement markers to know how much I filled them up because the checks are really, if you uh, fill up too much egg, they won't seal and you get an explosion. So I love the bowl, wide mouth, uh, pint jars with the measurements, but um, those here, the curve, they don't have measurements, but wide mouth, pint, those work totally fine here too. I don't need that measurement thing. A lot of times I don't need the measurement thing. Actually, I think only for the checks. But here, this is very important. This is, they call it regular, uh, regular jar. I call it a um, narrow mouth jar because these are the regular jars for me. Um, don't use these whenever you add eggs. Also, if it's eggs and meat, eggs and fish, only eggs, hell no. I did succeed maybe one or two jars, uh, the regular mouth jars, pint, they sealed up perfectly well with eggs and meat in it, but maybe two out of 10. So yes, I had like eight that didn't seal up. Well, yeah, it was delicious to eat, but usually I do charring for um, storing it for a while. Actually, this recipe, no, because we will have to open the jars, but later to that. So anyways, when you um, use eggs, just don't use these, just use white mouth. So usually jars, you fill up underneath this rim here. So you have one inch head space. I have a little bit more of the head space because of the eggs, eggs expand. And honestly, honestly, I'm a little bit worried that those are actually filled up too much. But because I have to open them after jarring anyways, right away for the recipe I wanna make, I wouldn't really care that much if they don't get properly sealed, but I hope they do. So let's, so I thought, no, nah, I'm not gonna reduce it. Let's just try it with um, that amount. So now I'm gonna show you with those two. And by the way, the salmon was wild coho salmon and skinless. I usually use the skin with charring and it's so delicious, but here for the cookies, Mm -mm, we don't want any skin here that's a fresh towel and this side here is damp so i want to clean the rims very well so and then the other side is dry so and now the lids and the ring with two fingers and just very loosely so see very loosely just like that those are ready for the canner 
So my pressure canner holds 16 jars and I always try to fill it up all the way. So here are my cookie jars. <laughs> Not yet, but these become cookies. So eight. So I made another eight, but with egg whites. So basically the same, but with egg whites and those won't become cookies. So those I actually uh, do for storage. So this is a recipe for today, but I'm gonna add these um, with egg whites. And here is one I used um, sardines, canned sardines and egg whites. And otherwise it's the same. It's um, except wild boar. So instead of the wild boar, I use the canned sardines. Otherwise also beef and salmon and so, but the numbers like the amount of meat and the amount of egg whites I use is a, a bit differently, always a little bit differently. Here, it's always the same. So I am doing dishes right now. Well, I'm almost done except for that one here. You remember I use that for blending the mixes and that happens all the time. Of course, you can see, maybe you can see through here, try to show you here, I think you see it, um, from the meat, of course, and the fish, probably mostly the meat. <laughs> um, that happens. So what I do is I go with a knife here in between and loosen those strings and cut them basically. Also here, I don't have to, yeah, I can also go, go from above, and try to cut them. Yeah, it's a bit annoying, I know, but uh, it's necessary to do that. And it's really worth it sometimes to blend your meats. There's so many great recipes with that. Sometimes I can even see these here. Usually after they are cut, unfortunately I don't have a really um, heavy stream. I don't have much pressure or like the other attachment where I can really put pressure on to wash it out. But oh, now it's almost gone. Yeah, so that's how I wash that one. Well, then of course also all the rest. But if I just wash it like this, those strings won't come off. The canner is ready. Here my lid. I'm going to check it. Going to check this. Yes, that works fine. Here the vent. Can I see through? Yes, I can see through it. That one is good too. So here is a V or they call it an arrow. V to V. Here's one too. Close it up. I already turned it on, highest heat. Now I'm gonna wait until a steady stream is coming out from the vent. First it's just like, psh, psh, psh. but once it's really steady, I'm gonna turn on my um, clock for 10 minutes, my timer. So the 10 minutes are over, you see that steady stream. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to put on the weight. And now I'm going to wait until it hits my number. Here is a chart. Um, what number you use, it depends uh, what altitude you live in. So for me, it's 13 pounds. So maybe at around 10 pounds, I start decreasing the heat. And as soon as it hits 13 pounds, I will set the timer to one hour and 15 minutes. And then I have to make sure it always stays above 13 pounds. I like to have mine between 13 and a half and 14 pounds. And then I'll just kind of uh, play with this a little bit more, a bit less. So it just always stays above the 13 pounds. If it goes below my number, I have to, well, first get it back to the number again and then start all over with the timer, one hour, 15 minutes. Also, you can see that one popped up. That means the steam is uh, building up here. It's all um, the pressure, the pressure built up in here. 
So after 75 minutes, having the gauge always at at least 13 pounds, I um, turned off the stove and I slowly, carefully put that away from the hot stove. So I just left it here and I waited until the gauge is at zero. And this one here, you remember that one that popped up? That went down now all by itself. So and now all I'm gonna do is taking off the weight and now I'm gonna wait 10 minutes. And after those 10 minutes, I'm gonna open up the lid and careful because uh, still a lot of hot steam will come out. So I will just open it like this. And then I'm gonna wait another 10 minutes. And then finally, I will take the jars out with this here, put it on my cutting board over here and just leave it here overnight and um, deal with the rest tomorrow, the next day. Ooh, and I got an explosion. What an explosion. Okay, on top of the egg whites, I think I um, filled it up too much. Okay, it's not as bad as it looked. So um, I knew that the 170 grams of meat or fish and 200 grams of eggs was a little bit risky. It would fill them up very, very high up. Um, and I was worried it wouldn't really seal, but I was like, hey, I basically need them to be open anyways because I want to continue the recipe so let's do a test right now but actually th those i didn't check yet um but those uh perfectly sealed see totally uh, um filled up until the top i like that so actually i already made lamb cookies that's how i got this idea so the two lamb are uh, sealed and labeled so I, act, I will actually store those and the ground beef I also made two so I labeled one because I only need to open one so these go into storage yeah this is of course also a really good recipe if you already have these done months ago a year ago and you're like oh let's make some cookies so you don't have to do all the step at once well what you can't because even already jarring takes two days so it's good if you already have some stored so these go into storage oh yeah the egg whites well this video is about the cookies so about these here but um so the egg whites three of them didn't uh, seal and yeah the egg whites they expand much more than the egg so i should have left uh, much more um, headspace i did leave more than with the eggs but not enough but those are uh, sealed perfectly so those go into storage but um i thought that the salmon the salmon was a problem the salmon with the egg whites also because i didn't have that much salmon left so i had a lot of egg whites in there so that just splattered all over but uh, I had another um, ground beef with egg whites and ground lamb with egg whites that didn't seal. And I cut these and you know what? I was like, hell, let's also make some ugh, egg white cookies. That one for sure didn't seal. Look, it like it, it's like higher up. It kind of rose up. Take the rims off all the rings yeah that's a i think that's a salmon again it's a fucking salmon look at this <laughs> cool usually well what i've done with those here then i clean everything very nicely do the seal test label them and they go into storage what will happen with those but here we want to continue the um recipe but i can show you really quickly so that one i also so i cleaned everything and then the seal test so if you want to put some into storage seal test is very important 
you want to do the seal seal test only twice not all the time so once when you're done jarring and another time before you open it and you want to eat it to see if it's still good so seal test you see here is uh, the lid the rim of the lid i want to hold on to the rim of the lid with two fingers and then perfectly sealed so now i have more space to work with i got rid of the other jars well i didn't get rid of it i just put them away for storage so those we want to open that one is already open um also here i can show you so honestly they say always use new lids of course you can reuse the rims as you can see uh, the rings um but you should always use re uh, use new lids i reuse them i'm honest now i open the jar so here the glass and the the lid where it's the closest here gets really close here i'm gonna take a spoon and not all spoons work that well that one works pretty well uh, th um it shouldn't be that thick like thicker ones don't work that well and then i go between and i open it up and then at the same time i open it up I, I couldn't open it up like this so i really need the spoon but then when i help with the spoon most of it i actually do with my hands so i don't make a dent into the lid so i can reuse it yep see yeah yeah i made a tiny 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 dent but this would so I reuse those. Um, I don't recommend to reuse them. I just do. <laughs> I want to get this whole thing out nicely. So I usually just take a knife, loosen it up. It's, it's already, some, most times it's already pretty loose, but just, yeah, so kind of just go around. Also try to loosen it up from the bottom, but there is usually on the bottom here, maybe you can see it. It's like some liquid or like it's it's moist. It's really moist down there. <laughs> it's a uh, it's super tasty. So I just want to get it loose. So, oop, yeah. yeah, we lost a little bit here. No problem. Now I just want to cut cookies. As I usually say, as thick, as thinly as you want. Um, you shouldn't cut those too thinly because then after you dehydrate them, you dry them, they break very easily. So you really want some thicker ones here. If you want here, the stuff when it comes off, I just take it off. So I think the ground beef, I cut a little bit too thick, uh, very thick. So this is the ground boar and I cut it like this thick as i said you can cut it as thick or as thinly as you want but i wouldn't go thinner than that probably what you can also do here sometimes see like this there's like a ring you can take this off this is the ground um, venison by the way you see i can also just take this in the part <laughs> looks almost like a cake oh so the salmon do you see this oh my gosh i don't know if i can use the salmon well let's see let's loosen it up and try to get it out as whole as possible loose oh fuck ha no so look, this is like totally different. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that one is the only one that didn't seal. So I don't know if it's because it didn't seal. Well, I had others before that didn't seal and it didn't uh, happen like this. So yeah, it's just, I think with this batch, the salmon, also with the egg whites, the salmon exploded everywhere. So the salmon was just my problem. Maybe I should put less salmon in it. Well, 
for this time I can't make any um, cookies I actually sorry I'm already eating from it <laughs> and I just got an idea I could make granola out of this salmon granola salmon egg granola egg salmon granola whatever well I've made egg granola before here is a recipe for that and I'm just gonna do the same thing, but with this here. So salmon egg granola. That's gonna be super delicious, yeah. Canned tuna mixed with eggs was the only one that um, I used cooked fish. And um, yeah, here the bottom is always much more moist. It looks like all the egg went there. <laughs> Look at this. This looks really cool. Wow, it's really hard like as a, compared to the rest. It's not so spongy. Whoa, look at that. Yeah, maybe with cooked meat or cooked fish, you get more like uh, a different texture, much more like um, smaller holes. You see, this is like bigger. Both works, but that's great, that's cool. Usually I eat the um, bottom part because it's uh, like super moist and uh, it's super delicious. So when I made them, I was thinking, ooh, I should put more salt into the mix. But then I was like, ooh, no, I'd rather do it later. So um, especially dried, dehydrated food, I want salty, like crunchy, salty. So yeah i just uh, put some salt so on both sides and then i already started here as you can see so i made this setup i have here a little rack put those on and then i put the big rack on top put those on now i can oops so And I can put that like this in the Ninja Foodie. Oh, yeah, well, I should. Oh, fuck. <sighs> so don't worry, my setup here does work, especially once it's in here. Then actually it, nothing can happen anymore. The problem is on the lower rack, um, on one side, I had the two with uh, the two ground lamb with egg whites and they're much heavier. So it like, yeah, tilted. Anyways, so um, I already started because it will take a long time. Ninja foodie and dehydrate. I put it to um, just what it says at the beginning, 150 Fahrenheit. And the Ninja foodie goes up to 12 hours. So I just keep dehydrating it until they totally dried out. So tomorrow maybe I have to add more hours and I have to do it in batches. So this is my first batch. And here the others, the uh, ground venison and the canned tuna, I will have to do after the others. I am so excited. I used to make Christmas cookies every year, up to 20 different kinds. And then, yeah, so I stored them in those uh, cook tin boxes and I put them in those bags and um, gave it to people as a little gift. So I never get to use those bags and boxes anymore, but now I have cookies again. So I'm so excited to be able to use all that again. These are the egg whites and don't they look so cool they kind of look like chocolate chip cookies like that one here that's a lamb egg white and these are um beef egg white i'm so glad i made some of the egg whites now i'm sad i didn't make more i mean that looks so cool so we have egg and here beef, lamb, wild boar, venison, canned tuna, and here the egg whites. I'm so happy. I actually 
added those. Look, they look like chocolate chip cookies. Don't they look so awesome? I think that's so cool. Um, beef and lamb, and I don't remember which one is which. Ugh. I totally forgot. I also have actually these here. These are just egg, and these are, um, I call them egg chips. They're in the same, uh, the recipe is the same with the egg granola chips and flour. I think that's um, what it's called. So I could actually also add just egg. Well, I don't really have space anymore. Um, but yeah, of course, you could also make some with just egg. As I told you, remember the salmon? I'm a bit sad I don't have salmon. Here. And oh, and look at the color. It's really, there's some, oh, the color would be so nice. I think that is also so cool, especially, well, the egg whites. They just, I didn't even want to add those to the recipe. So I'm like so happy I did it. I know I have to mention it again because they just look like chocolate chip cookies. It looks so cool. And the venison and the canned tuna, they really look differently. So the salmon would have been so cool. Look with that orange in it. Ah, I'm a bit sad. So I crumbled everything up even more and I just made salmon egg granola. So, um, oh, and this is so delicious. I already tried some. Mm, oh yeah, it's salmony. That's cool. Mm, I could put them a, that little bit also on here. You see? Oh, I could. I could put it like in the rows, fill up the rows, but then you don't see anything from the platter anymore. Fuck. Ooh, now I get to taste them. So now I just changed basically the cookies I had in the very back, the ugliest ones. I just put in the very front because I always like to eat the ugly ones first. And yeah, so they are like some, when I um, prepared all those pictures with uh, the Christmas cookie stuff to put them in the, in the boxes and in the little bags and stuff. So some broke. So yeah, they're a bit fragile, not not too much. You, uh, I handled them so many times now with putting them there and there and there and pictures here and there. So they're not that fragile, but yes, they are. And that's why don't make them too thin. But like this one here, this is really a really thick one. So here, I don't know, I made it too thick. And I just think it's also so funny these, the egg whites, are the dark ones. They look so cool. Venison. Aguita. The venison is one of the really fragile ones. Oh, yeah. It's super cool. I can taste the venison. Oh, yeah. Nice. But not too strong. Mm, really good. It's like a tasting, so I need water in between. Wild boar. Mm. Ooh, good. Mmm. I would never guess wild boar or pork or super good beef. Yeah, that thick one. I think I took the thickest one. Oh, cool. So, mmm, mmm, I actually like that. Because it's so much thicker than the others. It's not all the way dried out. Of course, I could put it back in and let it dry out just as much as the others. But I actually like that, mm, well, this recipe is crunchy cookies. So yeah, these are really crunchy. Well, here, it's still a bit crunchy, but mm, much less. So here it's the, oh my gosh, I actually love that right now. I would advise you actually 
to make some thick and some thinner ones. Not too thin again, otherwise they break. Lamb. It's funny, you gotta wait. You gotta chew. Now the flavor, ooh, now it's flavoring. Ooh, that, the lamb is really good. Well, I love lamb. Also with the venison, and well, with all of them, it's like, first, you just taste crunchy, however crunchy tastes. It's like egg and, and then you have to let it mix with your saliva and keep chewing and then suddenly, oh, the flavor gets there. Mmm. Oh, wow. The lamb is super delicious. The lamb is so good. Tuna. Those, I think that they look cool. They're also different from the others because I used canned tuna that was already cooked. So I guess that's why they, they're much more even. And well, I, I love how those look. I, I love it that they look differently. So yeah, it's cool. Tuna. Different texture. Oh, wow. Oh yeah, tuna. Mmm, good. Super cool. Wow. I'm actually, yeah, they, they really taste awesome. I, I love how they taste. Okay, I'm super excited about the egg white ones. So um, those, I, I, I don't, I mean, look at this. It's chocolate chip cookies. Well, yeah, keep in mind, that's sometimes the problems with um, recipes I make when they look so cool or they look authentic, then you have like a certain taste in your brain already. You're like, oh, that's gonna taste sweet. Oh, that's gonna taste like that. Oh, that's gonna taste like a chocolate chip cookie. No, you shouldn't do that because otherwise, if you do that, it could be that then, I mean, I mean, imagine, this is tuna, tuna and egg, and you ha um, think about, oh, it's gonna taste sweet, and then you bite into it, it's like, what the fuck is that? It's carnivore, it's like, it's savory, it's carnivore, it's meat and eggs. <laughs> Super excited. I think that's the beef. Oh, um, we'll see. Wow. Oh my gosh. I'm so sad. The other um, jars, egg whites and meat or fish that popped up open, that I just ate, that, well, it was so good that, that I just ate it and didn't make more of those. This is so good. And they thicker a little bit and they again not totally dried out what i absolutely love honestly i would such a, i probably with all of them i would prefer if it's not totally dried out because it does like yeah i'm pretty sure this is beef because like the lamb you can usually tell this is so good. Oh my god. I'm so surprised. Wow. Last one for the taste test. Lamb chocolate chip cookie. Lamb egg white chocolate chip cookie. It's, I think it's so funny that egg whites got darker than the eggs. Anyways. Mmm. 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 Yeah. I want to say I like the egg whites even better, but I don't know. Maybe it's just because they're not all the way done and I really like that. So, no, they're all amazing. So, the egg whites I just made for myself and I didn't really want to put that down in the recipe. So just with the eggs, so you remember, do I remember, 170 grams of fish, meat, and 200 grams of egg. That amount is great, but it's risky. So maybe 
reduce it a little bit with the, well, maybe 165 grams of the meat or fish and maybe 190 grams of um, egg. And then you're a little bit safer that it will really seal up. So with the egg whites, so I just used up meat or just kind of, they all, they're all a little bit different. But the canned sardine egg whites that um, perfectly sealed, I used 150 grams of canned sardine and 160 grams of egg whites. Yes. And I did it the same like I did the eggs. But yeah, I totally advise you if you want to do some cookies, also do some with egg whites. That's really cool. They super tasty. I used egg whites from a cotton that totally works fine. The pastor uh, pasteurized uh, egg whites because you don't whip them so then those work perfectly. I'm super happy how this came out. It is so cool. It's so much fun. Servus! Happy National Cookie Day. Super tasty. I put some brisket on it. Ooh, yeah. Also super cool. Cookie with scrambled eggs. Ooh, super delicious. Mmm, oh yeah. Thanks for watching. If you try out this recipe, please tag me and let me know how you like it. Subscribe, share, like, comment, follow me on Instagram at Carnivore Girl. See you next week in my next episode of Carnivore Girl's Creative Carnivore Kitchen. No plants, no dairy, the next level cooking show.